the Boston Celtics do something they haven't really done this season, come back to win in the fourth quarter. Robert Williams, what an amazing game from him. And the Philly game happened. I'm going to talk about it all right now on the Locked On Celtics podcast. Be ever ready. Recognize the city of champs. Boston, baby, we do what you can. Locked on number 18, Tatum and Brown, J team. Step back, we gon' wet that and slay teams. Of course, the Celtics, who else could it be? Screaming like KG with the Larry OB. Corrales above average, assessing the team status. Best daily pod, no cap, salary matching. Clutch like Bird to DJ, keep John on replay. Primetime, dapping up the truth on the sideline. Rain and Jays, how it started, raising banners, how we finished. Locked on Celtics, pod, home of the winners. B. Hey there, thank you for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day and part of your daily routine. A reminder, Locked On Celtics is free and available wherever podcasts exist. The show is also on YouTube. Make sure you're watching the show on YouTube. Just crossed 3,500 subscribers, which is good. Uh, thank you very much for that. would like to get to 4,000 next. Keep hitting those next milestones. If you ever missed an episode and you want to go back, scroll through LockedOnCeltics.com. The Boston Celtics beat the Chicago Bulls 114-112. On Saturday, uh, an amazing uh, fourth quarter comeback. This was uh, not something we're used to seeing. Uh, the Celtics were, were going through their normal fourth quarter, kind of like, oh, here we go again. And nope, in the last couple minutes, they ended up turning things around behind Robert Williams especially. Uh, the Celtics win, and and I know a lot of people want to kind of poo-poo this win and be like, well, they're, they were supposed to win that game. You can say that about a lot of games this season. Celtics haven't won a lot of games that they were supposed to win. We're looking for little signs of progress. Going down in the fourth quarter at, in, in, against the team that Chicago is you know, very shorthanded. They only had about 10 players available. But look, cohesion is pretty good there. They've clicked pretty quickly. The DeMar DeRozan is really good. I mean, he's kind of being bounced around in the MVP conversation, for God's sake. Vucevic is no slouch. They had players. Kobe White was back. Uh, you know, he's not bad. Uh, they, they had guys out there that, that could perform. Ayo DeSumo is just a, a, a really good rookie. So Chicago was never just going to lay down. And to have the Celtics go through that fourth quarter, fall behind, fall behind by a fair amount, like six or eight points, and then turn around and say, nope, you know what? We're actually going to stop the bleeding. We're actually going to compose ourselves. We're actually not going to go super ISO. That, to me, is a big deal. That's a huge deal for me. I, I, I'll, I'll take it. I'll t- you know, a win is a win. And, and the way I compared it, because people come back at me on Twitter and on Boston Sports Journal. By the way, I'm John Corrales. I cover the team for Boston Sports Journal. If you're new to the show, I've also written a book called The Boston Celtics All-Time All-Stars, which you can get everywhere books are sold online. And uh, on my website, johncorrales.com, 30 bucks gets you a signed copy uh, with a personalized message, of course. People come back at me when I say a huge win, and they say, look, it's the middle of January. You beat you know a team that was depleted. A Chicago team that was missing half their players. You're supposed to win those games. But I look at it like this. We're, we're watching a kid trying to ride a bike, essentially. And they've been falling a lot off of their bike. This is the first time that they've actually like made it to the end of the block without falling. And so that's a big deal. I'm, I'm not entering them into any bike races or anything like that. They're not going into the Tour de France, but they are. <laughs> that is a big deal for me. So I'm going to take it as such. Any step forward, a fourth quarter team, a team, a team that has has been so bad in these fourth quarters, to come out there and be bad again, and then say, nope, you know what? We're actually gonna we're actually gonna hold on here. That that to me is a a, a big deal. When Tatum turned the ball over three and a half minutes or so to go, it was, and you heard it on the broadcast. They're like, okay, this is a big spot for the Celtics. They really need this. They really need to score here. And then Tatum fires a pass, miscommunication, fires it down the other end of the court. You're like, okay, all right, well, well, they, they can get a stop. And, you know, maybe, and they did. And they come down and Tatum has an offensive foul. And you're like, okay, I've seen this too many times. This is a, a bad turnover. This is a, a bad offensive foul. It was, it was kind of ugly. 
I, I opened up my my document and started started to say, okay, I'm I'm gonna start writing this as is as if it's a loss. Because you start writing when you're doing my job, you start to write before the game is over. You start to like get a jump on things or else you're gonna be up all night writing. And then there was this kind of click moment. DeMar DeRozan misses a shot that he had been hitting and he had been hot all all quarter. Celtics come down the other end. They get a score. They, they're not forcing it anymore. They're, they're going to rob. They get an alley-oop to Robert Williams. They get uh, a baseline jumper from Jalen Brown. They get free throw shooting from Robert Williams. They get really good defense from Jason Tatum, who, after making those plays, wasn't caught up in the officiating. He was talking to the refs, no doubt, but wasn't caught up in the officiating. He locked down DeMar DeRozan, played really good defense down those last couple of minutes, and the Celtics did what they had to do. So you have all of those elements that were were kind of starting to conspire, and the Celtics kind of flipped it. They, they didn't all of a sudden just lose sight on defense. They actually stepped up their defense. They didn't go complete ISO. With 35 seconds left, you get the ball to Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown runs a pick and roll. And by the way, Jalen Brown, underrated element to this game. Not a lot of people talking about the Jalen Brown game in this. The fourth quarter, his numbers in this game were not particularly great. Uh, Eight of 19. He finished with 19 points and seven rebounds and four assists. He did have four steals and only one turnover. That's great. But 42% shooting. He didn't hit a single three-pointer. He missed all five. It's like, eh, all right, Jalen Brown. But the fourth quarter... There was a stretch where he and DeMar DeRozan were going back and forth in the mid-range, kind of a mid-range battle, which I thought was fun. That baseline jumper was huge, huge, huge. And that pick and roll that he ran with Robert Williams, it's 35 seconds to go. Think about this. It's 35 seconds to go. And instead of forcing a shot, he immediately reads the setup. You have a pick and roll with Robert Williams. Nick Vucevic comes up. He's now up. At, at the level of the screen, Tatum is spacing in the corner. You've got the defenders up. There's a whole big lane there. And the right read, the right play was to get the ball to Rob. And he did it. And he did it. The, the pass was at the right time. And he ended up getting fouled and he made both free throws. Now, you might say, getting the ball to Robert Williams and risking him taking the free throws, he's a 68% three, uh, free throw shooter, is that the best play? Like the, the play to get it to him, and it, it almost was a three point play opportunity. The play was to get him to get it to him. Now, Rob could have turned around and saw Jason Tatum cutting from the corner and, and given it to him, but he ended up going up with it. The whole play worked. I thought it was great. I thought Jalen giving the ball up in that moment is a really big step forward. I don't want to, I don't want to oversell it. Because we do tend to overreact to these moments. But what's our biggest complaint down the stretch? Too much ISO. Too much isolation, which leads to turnovers. And here is Jalen Brown, one of the culprits for sure, making the right read, making the right play, and it pays off. Robert Williams hits both free throws, hits four free throws down the stretch. He hadn't gone to the line the whole game. Hits four free throws down the stretch. Beautiful. So you've got Tatum, who had, did not have a particularly great game either. 23 points, 8 of 24 shooting, uh, 1 of 5 from 3. Did have 12 rebounds, 4 assists, 2 blocks. The 2 blocks were great. Did have 4 turnovers, but the defense down the stretch. So, okay, he's not contributing offensively down the stretch, but he contributed defensively. Huge defensive plays. When it's not working on one end, what's one of the biggest complaints with Tatum? He gets in his head. He gets in, into the things with the refs. That's that's huge. Got to shout out Al Horford, who another underrated, really good game here. Fifteen points, seven of eleven shooting. It felt like it felt like Al was the catalyst in the beginning because the Celtics had a great first quarter, and Al was the catalyst there. In the third quarter, Al got uh, you know got them settled down again. Whenever the Celtics got a little too out of sorts, Al was there to settle them down. It's the exact type of uh, offense that you want to see from Al Horford. I think I think he was 
even more underrated than Jalen was. Jalen had a big fourth quarter and, and some nice plays. Al was he was not on the floor down the stretch, but they um, I thought I thought Al did a great job settling them down. There were certainly things that I didn't like about this game for sure. The defense I thought for most of the night was awful. You, they, the 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 Bulls would drive and there would be one or two passes and and that would lead to a lot of open shots. The rotations behind the first action was they were gross. The Celtics defensively had huge huge uh, mistakes. They really could have used Marcus Smart. This is a game where they could have they they could have used the best of Schroeder and Smart. Like they got early on really good Dennis Schroeder, like he was attacking and and he started attacking again down the stretch. And that led to a couple of alley oops to Robert Williams, which I thought were huge. Uh, the the defense though, they could have used Marcus Smart kind of settling them down defensively. I think there were a couple of plays there where Guys, you can see guys just reacting late. They'd something would happen, a pass, and a guy'd be like, "Wait, what am I? Oh, that way, and go that way." Like that—that that was uh, uh, a messy defensive effort, I would say. And they gave—I mean, what did they give up? It was like what did I say, one twelve, one fourteen, one twelve. Um, that was uh, a tough defensive effort for a team that's been generally pretty good defensively they they really could have used smart down the stretch and maybe it wouldn't have come down to that that end but it did and Robert Williams was great and I'm saving Robert Williams for the end because I'm going to talk about him almost entirely in this next segment so I'll do that when we come back first I have got to talk to you about Shopify if you are a small business and you're looking for help trying to keep up with the big boys out there in, in the online uh, shopping game, you need Shopify. Because when I go shopping, I'll be honest, like I, I even a small business, I expect a small business to have a lot of the same things that a big business does. An easy checkout, uh, connections to you know signing in different ways, connections to accept all of my credit card payments, all the different ways that I wanna pay. That is all gonna happen through Shopify. You can reach customers online across social networks with an ever-growing suite of channel integrations and apps, including Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, and more. Shopify is going to scale your business, and that is a journey of endless possibility. Uh, I've tried to do online shopping stuff it's, it, and, and start businesses online. like it, It's hard, but Shopify powers millions of businesses from first sale to full scale and you can reach customers online everywhere uh, and gain insights as you grow with detailed reporting of conversion rates, profit margins, and beyond. It's more than a store. Shopify grows with you. You can try it for free right now for 14 days. Go to shopify.com slash locked on NBA, all lowercase shopify.com slash locked on NBA. You're going to get full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. I'm telling you, if you're trying to sell stuff online, you need to try Shopify. It's going to level the playing field no matter how small a business you are. Grow your business with Shopify today. Go to shopify.com slash locked on NBA right now. Shopify.com slash locked on NBA. Thank you for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. Why not make Locked On now your second listen every day after every NBA game Monday through Friday? You're going to get a podcast of recaps from, from that night in the NBA from each side. So when the Celtics um, are playing at noon, the Celtics are playing at noon uh, on Monday, uh, you'll get both sides. I'll record uh, a couple minutes and, and, and send it in, and you'll get both sides of the, the recap on Lockdown Now. So check it out wherever you get your podcasts. You can watch those recaps on uh, the Lockdown NBA YouTube page. Robert Williams was fantastic in this game and has been fantastic lately and has been a huge, huge reason for the Celtics. They won four out of five now. And uh, a big, a, he, he, he's turned it around from a December where he was struggling. And the conversation was, has Robert Williams regressed? The answer is, Now, clearly, no, he didn't regress. He was going through a slump and going back to some bad habits. But 
as long as he's focused and and present and and kind of not trying to do too much or not not um, falling back into bad habits, he's going to be a very important piece for the Celtics. I even said on a recent podcast, can Robert Williams be their third star? Is this the third guy that they're looking for? And he very well could be. I think we're starting to see a little bit more of that uh, possibility, a little bit more growth in that area. 14 points against the Chicago Bulls, 13 rebounds, six assists, two blocks, uh, and down the stretch factored into uh, almost all of what the Celtics had done offensively. A couple of alley-oops, he had the four free throws, he set a screen for Jalen Brown, he and Josh Richardson on the elevator doors play, which is... Uh, the elevator door screen is simple. Just think of an elevator doors closing like this, and that's that's your that's your screen. One guy's here, one guy's here. They close the doors when the guy runs through, and there you go. I just played a little peekaboo on the YouTube page. So they set that screen on the baseline for Jalen, and he drilled the baseline jumper. And so he was heavily involved in this, but it was the poise down the stretch, the fact that he was still. Um, aware of what was going on, making the right reads, uh, again, not trying to do too much, but also willing to take those shots, willing to put himself in those situations, and calmly, calmly drilling those free throws. Again, he hadn't been to the line the whole night. Next thing you know, he's on the line to tie the game. They're down two, and he hits he hits the first one, which goes front rim, back, and then off the backboard and in, you can see him tap the floor and he was like, you could tell he was like, okay. And then the second one, front rim, a little bit more feathery touch, shooters roll, bounces right in. Then the next two to put them up to, it was 112, uh, and to put them up to, drills them, boom, boom, like just perfect, perfect shots. Uh, Huge, huge plays from him to make that, that roll, to set that pick and roll and just, have the confidence to take that shot rather than do what he's done with a lot of the offensive rebounds, which is turn and look. Here comes a crowd. I'm going to turn and look. Where, where's JT? He could have very easily turned around and and realized that, that Tatum was coming from the corner and dumped it off, and Tatum probably would have taken a dribble and laid it in, but that's not what happened, and he did a really good job of closing this game. He was spectacular. And on top of that, on top of that, you have the extraordinarily (laughs) large amount of lobs that he's catching. That is going to have a cumulative effect. Like we know that when you turn the corner, that Robert Williams is going to be coming down and he can catch a lot of the lobs that are thrown up there, even the, the, the not-so-great ones. He had one against Chicago that Vucevic actually tipped and kind of misdirected just a little bit, and he finished that. So the cumulative effect of Robert Williams going down the lane and catching all of these ridiculous lobs is going to be teams saying, well, we have to play him closer. We have to be more worried about him, which creates more gravity towards him and allows the ball handler more space to do what he's doing and draws in help and allows for more kickouts. Now, the Celtics, I don't know if they're constructed enough to constructed well enough with good enough shooters to to draw that kind of help and, and take advantage of it. But that's going to be the play. That's going to be the right play. And you got to hope that Grant Williams, uh, Josh Richardson, Smart when he's in the game, Schroeder when he's in the game, Peyton Pritchard if he's in the game, Aaron Neesmith, those guys, Al Horford, who finally got one to fall against Chicago, that those guys, when they get the kick, the drive-in kick, that they're going to be able to finish that. But let's play the long game here for just a second. It's not even necessarily all about them 
doing it this season. It's about Robert Williams becoming that threat. And when you add that shooter down the road, opening things up for those guys. When Aaron Neesmith, theoretically, becomes a more of a knockdown shooter, assuming that he does, getting him the ball with more room to shoot. And then, then you start to get into the pick your poison because are you going to help off the shooters or are you going to help as, as Rob rolls? That's going to be the cumulative effect of all of these lobs that he's catching at this ridiculous rate. The other team is going to have to figure this out and stop him and slow him down. And that's one more person that they're going to have to worry about. And they're going to have to worry about him a whole lot more than they have been recently. And that's going to open things up for everybody else. So the Robert Williams development has been huge lately. And in this one, you add the closing nature of it all. I thought it was awesome. All right, up next, the Philly game. I don't think we're going to spend a whole lot of time on the Philly game, but it happened. I will address it. I will not ignore it. Uh, And that's coming up next. Built Bar is there to help you cash in on those New Year's resolutions. If your New Year's resolution is about getting fit or eating healthier, then you absolutely have to make Built Bar part of your plan. It's a protein bar that tastes just like a candy bar. And I know that you want to have that candy bar uh, and cheat a little bit, but you can actually curb that craving and satisfy that craving with a Built Bar. Because you know what? Built Bars, first of all, are covered in 100% chocolate, which is great. That satisfies that part of the craving. And they're only going to be 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net car- net carbs. About. Mo- that's how most of these are. It's going to be like some are 140, 150, 170 calories, but you get the picture. 17 grams of protein. About, about that. Candy bar, 240 calories, 30 grams of sugar, dozens of net carbs. Is that worth it to you? No. Get yourself the Built Bar and use the promo code LOCKED15 when you do it. You can go check out all of these different types of... Uh, Flavors. You got if you like coconut or peanut butter or raspberry or mint. They, they've got they've got everything for you. If you've got a nut allergy, there are plenty of options for you. If you're on a keto diet, this works. Check out check it out at built.com. The promo code LOCK15 works every single time. So don't feel like you, there, there's pressure to stock up on 20 things. Just keep going back. Just keep going back. Be a regular customer. 15% off every time with locked 15. Bet online wants to wish you a happy new betting year as we head into deeper into the playoffs the nfl playoffs continue on with some hilarious finishes to (laughs) games uh but it'd be even better if you could win a few bucks and do that at bet online it's a new year and they've got a new updated desktop and mobile website so sign up today get a 50 percent welcome bonus with your first deposit just use the promo code locked on to get started so whatever your favorite sport is or your favorite vegas casino games all right there at bet online so take advantage of all these amazing offers for 2022. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports. Bet online, where the game starts. Please gamble responsibly. Hey, thanks for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. Why not make Locked On Bets your second listen? We just told you about the uh, Bet Online deal. You can go to Locked On Bets. Listen to Locked On Bets. Your boy Q, Lee Sterling, have you covered with some great advice if you're going to throw some money down on these games. They've got you covered with uh, wrong team favored and other expert picks. So check it out wherever you get your podcast. Celtics on Friday night sent us into the weekend on a very blech note, uh, losing to the 76ers 111-99, a game in which they started out on an 8-2 run, and I thought, all right, here we go. These guys are moving. They had a couple of turnovers early on. I'm like, ah, it's okay. You know, a couple turnovers, they'll clean that up. The way they're moving, the way they're 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 really trying that the effort, the the energy, I, I like that in the first few minutes. And then cue the flushing sound because it all went down the toilet. The Celtics turned the ball over a ton. Uh the Sixers had 29 points. They won eleven to one eleven to one to ninety-nine. It wasn't that close, but this 29 points off of 17 Boston turnovers is the absolute difference in the game. Difference in the game. It all fell apart in the first quarter. 
uh, this, <laughs> this run is so insane to me. The Sixers went 28 to 2, a 28 to 2 run in the first quarter. How do you get outscored 28 to 2? Uh, the Celtics just booted. I mean, it was, it was as gross as a game as you're going to find. Um, Jason Tatum was terrible. His, his now as good as he was down the stretch in Chicago, not getting caught up in all that other stuff. That, that was the opposite. The Philly game was the opposite. He was absolutely preoccupied, a hundred percent preoccupied with the officials. In fact, Ime Odoka before the Chicago game was talking about, yeah, you know, whether it's, he, he was talking in generalities, but he was also like, he made sure to bring up like the officials as part of the things that he needed to, to get these guys to, to stop doing. It was at a hundred percent in reaction to Tatum's game against the Sixers and, you know, got a technical foul. He, he, after the game, he basically admitted that his, his head was not in the right place that I don't know what else to say about that game other than the Celtics for some reason, for some reason, just absolutely sucked. For, uh, let's see, there's 48 minutes in the game. The first, like, three or four, they were good. Then the bench came in and made it close over the last, like, five. So we'll say 40 minutes of god-awful, horrible, gross, gross, gross basketball. Um, they they did almost nothing right. And, like, Tatum, Tatum, Tatum was making, like, simple, like, cross-court passes just to start the offense, and those were getting deflected. And, you know... One thing that I have to, when when they're facing a shot blocker versus when they're not, two totally different teams. Vucevic is not a shot blocker. They attacked, and when they were getting downhill against Chicago, they were great. No fear. Against Philly, with a shot blocker there, totally afraid. And I want them to get it in their heads that you attack a shot blocker, you attack him, you make him move. I am so sick and tired of these guys just letting the shot blocker win by being by existing in the paint. Like I get it, I get it. You're driving, and if you're in the middle of the paint and you see Embiid, Rudy Gobert, uh, you know, pick another one of the elite shot blockers that's in the league. You don't want to just like go and just shoot right in front of them so they can block the shot. But you do want to go at him and send some cutters behind and have dump offs or have somebody in the dunker spot like Robert Williams. And if you're going to challenge this guy, have a dump off there or have a, an option in the corner or have some, some place where you can suck the defense in or have cutters getting into the middle of the lane to draw the defense in, to draw those, those shot blockers out. I mean, it's facing a shot blocker like, like that. Yes, you can go pick and pop and you can try to have, um, it, it, it's so impossible to do that with Embiid sometimes because you can put a pick and pop option in there. Who's it going to be? Horford, it's hard to ask Al Horford to do both shoot well from distance and bang with Embiid. That that's a hard that's a hard ask for anybody. You can put Grant Williams in there, but that's going to you're just going to get crushed on offense. So yeah, the Embiid makes that very very difficult. So the pick and pop is just not going to be as as easy an option. Send those cutters, attack the shot blocker, make him make a decision. And you know what? If you get blocked once or twice, not a big deal. Just get back on defense in transition and go at him again. He's going to commit a foul. He's going to make a mistake. Nobody's perfect back there. Keep attacking them and keep sending options from different angles. You're going to get there. Just keep doing it. But if you're just going to stand on the perimeter and say, nope, I'm not going in there, then you're doing two things. You're letting him rest on defense you're just you're just capitulating to him. You're just letting him sit there and be like, "Well, he's a shot blocker, so you know I can't do anything." So he's just going to stand there, and he's going to have plenty of energy to go down on offense and toast you on offense. I talk about it all the time on the podcast. Defend with your offense. A guy like Embiid, you got to make him work defensively. So when he comes down on offense, he doesn't have a, a lot of a lot of energy. He doesn't have a huge gas tank. Right, 
So make him work defensively, and then he's going to start settling for jumpers, especially late in the game. He's going to start taking a ton of threes and a ton of fadeaways, and he's not going to have as much juice. He's not going to have as much lift in those legs, and those are going to fall short. Happens all the time with Embiid, but you got to make him work defensively, or else you're toast. And the other thing it does is it lets the other guys on defense load up against everything else that you're trying to do. So if they know, hey, these guys aren't driving against Embiid, so the pass, no one's cutting, no one's driving, so the passes are only going to go side to side. So of course a lot of these passes got deflected because the defenders can just sit on passing lanes knowing that the ball is going to come through. There's no threat. They don't have to worry about anybody cutting behind them. They don't have to worry about any of that stuff. They don't have to worry about you know somebody being in the middle of the paint and getting a semi-clean eight-foot shot. No, they just think, hey, I'm just going to hang out here. I know I've got this guy over there in the corner. I'm just going to kind of hang out in the passing lane and, and know that the Celtics, when they do do something, that's going to be the, that's the only result it's going to be. And so I can sit on that and you can get a bunch of turnovers. That's why these things happen. The Celtics basically let all of that stuff happen to themselves. So the next time they face a shot blocker, hopefully they can challenge that shot blocker and be active. Move the ball, move yourself, make those guys make decisions because they're not always going to make the right decisions. And yeah, maybe it's going to be a bit of a rock fight, but you got to win those games. And that's what those games are going to be. You got to find out a way to win those games. Get the, get the shot blocker tired. That's my thing. That's my thing with, with playing Philly. Losing to Philly, you know, Embiid is a monster. He's been on a roll. I get it. And they, you know, they've got some, you know, some good shooters and, and everything. And, uh, you know, you're not going to win every game. I'm not that, I'm not that worried about it. But when you, when you play like that, you basically set yourself up for the exact type of game that you had. You just, it's the, you know, when you think about what they did for most of their offensive possessions, it's not a shock. All right. Celtics, Pelicans. For uh, Monday, Martin Luther King Day, starting at 12.30 p.m. So I'll be doing a podcast in like 12 hours, <laughs> um, doing a post-game podcast. So uh, check it out. Post-game podcast after a very early game, a matinee. Big slate of games. Uh, Monday is a huge day in the NBA. So uh, check it out. Uh, subscribe to the show if you're not subscribed. If you're new, welcome aboard. If you're still listening now, hopefully that means you like the show enough that you want to subscribe. Do so. Subscribe to the YouTube page again. Cross thirty five hundred. Uh, just check that out. Cross thirty five hundred on the YouTube page, which is huge. Uh, thank you all very much. Let's get it to four thousand. Let's keep pushing it out there. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Tell everybody they should be listening to and watching the Lockdown Celtics podcast here on the Lockdown Podcast Network.